Hey Jose, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. You're doing good? Yeah. Are you ready for this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time you've actually seen this kit since it was finished. Yes, I have. I, I, I think it's, how, it's a deal. It's a nice deal. Yes. And, um, you know, I worked on the pattern off of one of the original costumes that we have. And then when I'm done, I first I work with muslin and then I, or paper, and then I go to muslin and then uh, I ma we make it up in muslin and then we take it apart and then we make it in paper again with the corrections. And then Jose goes in and he does his part uh, to, the, to the final corrections. So that, that way I'm too close to the project and he finds all my mistakes. So this is the time that we're going to open it up and we're gonna start at what I we think that the class should look at first. Don't yes. you agree? Yes. So shall we take out the pattern? So here first you have, we didn't cut this out for you except for a few pieces, um, which are the, um, the shoes and the hat. Those are cut out. The rest of it, you have to cut out yourself but each uh, bag has a number on it, and that has to do with the pattern pieces that you're gonna work with. And then below that is the inventory of the trim. So you'll have such as nine yards of gold um, trim. So that's there on the first page of the kit. And the second page, shall we turn it, is the suggested pattern layout. Look at this, it's very important to know where these pieces go on the fabric. Um, so this is how we suggest you lay it out. We can't make you do it. And obviously this piece, these are both on the fold. So you fold it and then fold it. And that's how you get the two pieces. So um, this is how we suggest that you do it. And the same with, with the stocking that you fold it, cut, on the fold, cut on the fold. So it's all there, so you, it makes it very easy for you to figure out. Um, the, the fabrics are very close to what they need to, there's enough for you to make a mistake, but not too many mistakes. So that's the pattern layout. Um, and then here's the second page, which has mostly the, the sleeve parts for the, for the girl. So this is for the girl. So we're gonna now move on to the pattern and the um, instructions and we will we're going to be making this just as it is in in uh, the pattern so we'll be working on that today so that we'll go to that and so you'll have that throughout this whole kit and then now let's go to the actual pattern pieces so say And we'll, go, we'll get to that. So they're gonna see plenty of that as we're working on it. This. Yes. The waistband. The waistband. The girl, mm -hmm. And the skirt. The skirt. Uh, the bleeding of the skirt. Bleeding of the skirt. The, um, putting the uh, waistband to the skirt. This part right here. We're gonna show them that, but they've got some good, they've got some good images there to work with. And then the over uh, pantalettes, over over, um, I think that's the panel at over pieces. You know, we did this a while ago, so I've kind of forgotten some of it. This but I'll remember it. And then the pantalettes. This is the um, pants. Pants. The girl. And then the hat. And then we, I have made one little change that if you are watching the class, it'll be a, a good thing to, you don't have to make the change, but it's a nice change. And then the joyful of the 72 bells. So we'll be, we'll be doing that too, so. And then the shoes. And the shoes, I think, are probably the most complicated piece in the whole um, thing, don't you think, agree? I, I think so. I didn't make work on those, but yeah, they can be complicated. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's not that complicated. I mean, it's complicated, but it, it, it works. So there's that. And so now we're in the pattern pieces. So we have colorized the pattern pieces to help you realize that, you know, which fabric you're supposed to use. And of course, if you follow the, the, the bags, you will be fine. So 
but it does make it help, help. It's helpful, and it does help you with the direction of things like the the uh, file stripes, which way they go. So, do take some time and look at all that. Is the skirt? And the skirt. And um, I, I know a lot of our uh, classes have had problems with um, the skirts with the skirts being longer in the back than the, it is in the front. So we have created the pattern piece so you don't have to, to use your uh, mathematical skill to make that work. The pants. Pants. Mm -hmm. and, and the stockings. And the stockings, which the stockings look kind of funny, but they really work perfectly yeah, if straight they're done way. right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the over sleeves. And this, these pieces that are quilted, these will be cut out for you because these are actually some very uh, precious um, vintage fabric and there was only so much. So we realized that it would be better for us to cut it out so that more people would have a, an opportunity to have the kit. So we've got that. Okay. All right. So we're going to, next we're going to cut out the pattern and if we were working with someone else's pattern and they gave us a nice little kit like that, we would, we would probably do it in tissue paper, don't you think, Jose? And, yes. And um, cut it out. And, and why are you using my good scissors? Oh, sorry. Because <laughs> they're your good scissors, not my good scissors. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm terrible with my scissors, but these these are my my good ones. So I don't want. Uh, uh, well, that that piece you don't have to do because we've omitted it from the pattern, Jose. So let's just okay. do the do the waistband. Okay. And um, so I mean, I think that most of you should be able to, to cut out a pattern. Yeah. So um, we're gonna we're gonna cut this out, and we will will be back in a minute. Leave it a little room when you cut it, and then when you lay it on the fabric, then you can just follow the line. It'll be easier, okay? Yeah, yeah. And and I think they really should consider doing this in tissue paper. Don't you agree? Yes. Make a copy it. Make a copy. You yeah. know, lay the uh, tissue yeah. paper on it. Make a copy. Pencil pencil line it. Yeah. Pencil and line and it. then they have it to turn back to to. To read, you yes. know, when it, when it, and it's easier to find the pieces. Yes, yeah. but whatever you feel, they feel comfortable with. Yes, no problem. Okay, so we're we're gonna both cut this out, and we'll be back. So we're back. We've cut out uh, the pattern pieces. Jose has his own special technique that we did, which is basically he's cut the pieces out but left a little bit of a margin so that you have the full line of that. And, and that's, you do it this way because sometimes if you cut the line out, you've actually made it too small. Yes. Yeah, so, and we want a really, really good fit. So we prepared the, the, the pattern pieces to go, and then the, the one thing that we do have to um, put together is the skirt. So let's pull the skirt piece out. And Jose earlier asked me why are there two two uh, pattern um, two skirts two skirts and it isn't two skirts. It's it's one skirt and we have to attach the, the pattern pieces together. Right. And the reason we've done that is to make it very easy for our sewers to do it. So all they have to do is place it on the fold. And so we're going to tape that up. You don't have to tape it up, but you, we're going to tape it up. Mm -hmm. Or you yeah. don't want to tape it up? Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's best to tape it up. Okay, yeah. so we'll mm -hmm. tape that up, and um, we'll do that real quick. We've got our little tape here. Um, David will be screaming at us because we took it from his packing room. So we're just going to tape that, and you can see there's where the lines go, and that's all you have to do. And if you hear snoring in the background, that's Bixby. He's down here with us while we're working. So we've got, officially now, we've got all our pattern pieces ready.
I mean, honestly, if we were making a dress here, we wouldn't even be using a pattern piece. We'd just be cutting it right into the, to the fabric. But, um, but you know, when you've made a few thousand garments, it's, it's easy to do. Yeah. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is just really for organization and not letting things get out of control. So we're going to take our pattern layout and then we're going to work with our kit. And as you can see, the, the kits are, the each packet is numbered. So number one is going to contain the pattern pieces for the overskirt, oversleeve, and um, two of these um, shoe parts. So let's just put, yeah, so we're gonna put those into the bag number okay. one. Over sleeve. Yeah. And just one, just one of those shoes, yeah, that one. So that goes in there. Then we're organized. And we're gonna do this whole thing, which you should do too, because um, there's a lot of components and it just, it just makes it just easier. Throw so, it in there. So, we're, so we've got it in there, and that's what we're going to do. So we will continue to do this, and we'll get it all loaded up. And you can see, if you look, if I can get the camera to operate. If you look, there's the numbers on the pattern pieces. And then up in the corner would be, like right here, to say number two. So these pieces will ultimately go in bag number two. So that's the whole point of this, to keep it uh, organized, because it's a lot of pieces. So we'll get this done and we'll be right back. We're back, we've bagged everything up. We've gotten, um, we've, we've put all the pattern pieces in the marked bags. Uh, we're very organized, which is really unusual because we're usually not, are we? <laughs> But we want to make it easy for all of you. So, so we've got it ready. And so we're going to do one of the first pieces we're going to do, cut out, is the bodice. Now, if you notice that the tarlatan is in the packet and the uh, silk um, ribbed file is in the packet also. Do not try to cut both things out at the same time because it's going to be way too thick and um, the tarlatan will, will ruin your good scissors. So uh, Jose's pinning the, the bodice top for the girl in the, in the file. This is, by the way, this is a tight fit material-wise. You don't have that much to work with. And the reason that is, is this is actually antique fabric and there's only so much of it. So um, it's very, very precious, but there, there's plenty to do this. So Jose is using um, not our, um, we're all out of our good uh, silk pins, and so we're just using cheapos. So he's definitely um, pinning it in the um, quarter inch seam allowance. So it's a, yeah, it's a quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch seam yeah. allowance. We did this so long ago, I can't remember. Um, and so if you see, in order to make it work, we have to do one going one way and one the other. But it doesn't matter because the stripes are going in the right direction. So we we're gonna get that all done. And this is a beautiful material. It's a very, very 19th century color. Um, you know, they love this kind of chaparral, they, we call it now chaparelli pink, but then it was just uh, probably some fantasy name for pink. So we'll have a, we'll have a little smidge of fabric left for something. It would, might be enough for somebody to do a hat, or, don't you think that'd be enough to do? Oh, perhaps um, covering some button buttons? Yes, yeah, yeah some buttons would yeah. be great. Mm -hmm. All right, so 
Jose is going to use his good scissors. I'm not going to cut right down at the edge, okay? I'm going to just leave it a little bit because I'm going to lay this, once it's cut, I'm going to lay it over the tarlatan. Yeah. And then I'll do the um, actual cutting, and that way both of them are um, the same size. The same size, and even, okay? Just I mean, this is your technique. Tight. Everybody has their own um, way of doing it. Now this is actually fairly thick material and there is actually a cord in there and the cord consists of quite a few, um, it's like a bundle of uh, threads that they wrap. And then here's the tarlatan. So for the tarlatan, which we have to use the same pattern piece for that, this we're going to use the cheapo scissors for the cutting because Tarlatan is like cutting paper. Now, I know, know a lot of you don't really understand tarlatan, but it, it is used today in a couple of applications. It's used for um, ball gowns and, and um, historical costumes. It's also used a little bit in men's clothing for um, collars and things like that and suits. Um, but the main manufacturing for, for Tarleton now is to clean machinery. And I, I know that there's some, some people out there have bought Tarleton to clean machines, and that's what it's good for, is cleaning machines. It's not the same as... Wait, did I put it on the wrong side? Did you put it the wrong side? Yep. The good news is if you make a mistake with the Tarleton, that, that um, we can get more of it. There we go. It should be at the bottom of the tarlatan instead of... Yeah, room. and it gives you pl plenty of room. And there should be enough left over that somebody could do a, the inners for like a mignonette hat or something like that. But tarlatan is very important in 19th century costuming. Uh, the thing that people don't realize is as it becomes 160 years old, it uh, deactivates and becomes soft and... Uh, sheds and um, but when it, when it was used it was very very crispy yeah see that's a perfect fit there. that's what yeah. you want to do right yeah. yeah so we'll finish cutting this out and then we're gonna we're gonna come back and we're gonna start some construction we're back we're getting to the fun part uh, Jose and I have been joined by uh, Georgiana who's gonna be our model today and she's going to be one of the new dolls that we're going to be having in our site soon and she's going to do the modeling and so we've cut out the pieces uh, the, they're sandwiched together with the with the um, tarlatan so we're ready to sew now one thing I want to tell you is that this file will unravel so what we want to do is not mess around, not handle it too much, get right down to the sewing. Yes. Is, so we're, we're not going to sit and ponder it. We're going to get right in it. Yep. So we're going to, let's, let's do this. So, okay. so we have the uh, front. Front. Okay. And uh, with us today is Rosie. And Rosie is my um, lifelong, my oldest relationship. Uh, which Jose is sharing the relationship with Rosie, and it's my oh, sewing machine. The and then there's the back. And you can see, I didn't do this, but you can see how absolutely worn it is from the, you know, 14 years of uh, Jose shoving... Uh, Seven, 17. 17. 17 years of... of so here's the front and back, and you can see it's beautiful, or the front. This is the front, and we're going to put the um, right sides together, okay? And there is a right side, and there is a wrong side. Yes, the pinker, is the pinker color is the right, and the pale is the, the wrong. Yes, 
Absolutely. Put this facing like this. I'm gonna pin them, pin it. Now you can do this by um, hand, you can do this by machine. It depends on whatever you want. Now I'm going to add the tarlatan. So you're gonna pin that pin in a separate one, pin. In a separate, yeah, you want these two to stay together. So you wanna pin this first and then the tarlatan goes up after. Yes. And, and it, it kind of stays in place, so you don't have to over pin it. That doesn't slip quite the way that the silk does. So there's one side with the tarlatan, when now we need the other side. Right. And this center seam is what really gives the costume its, its shape. And it's very important to get the seam allowance just right because we want that point that it has. You want to do a quarter of an inch um, seam allowance, okay? We have a heavy fabric and we want it to, you know, if, it, if this is going to fit snugly because we want it to have that tiny little look. Um, so we want, yeah, and that's, that's, that's what you want. You nice and tight. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, on this, we're going to do all the sewing and then we're going to press. We'll do the sewing, then we'll do, uh, we'll open the seams. Right. Okay. So with, the, with the iron. I'm going to pin the shoulder, the top of the shoulder, right here. So you just grab one back. And if we make a mistake and do the wrong side, then we have to take it out and do it again. That's all okay. there is. So to right it. side, right side with pinky, right pinky side. To pinky. So now we're going to do this, show, so the, the shoulder seams. Oh, my thread just broke. I think Rosie needs to go to the uh, salon and have a... It's been... Um, she hasn't gotten any treatment. It's been a nice machine, let me tell you. That's... But you know, can you imagine when Michael bought it? Oh yeah. He was three years old. <laughs> so I was about seven. So I've had it for 50 years. I'm proud of that. It's one of the few relationships in my life that has lasted that long. We've both aged. I'm pretty scarred up too. All right, so we, we've got that, and now we're gonna do the sides. At this point... Uh, do you wanna okay. press it out? Yes, maybe okay. uh, it'll be easier, but, um, well, I can show you another trick. We can do these sides too. Yeah, might as well. Well, what, let's, what, what do you think is best for them to do? Well, it's probably I would best just... for them to, to Let's let's do it right. Let's press it for them right okay. now. Okay. Okay, we're back. We're going to press the bodice. And first we're going to use this steam it. We don't use steam irons here. We use a mister and a dry iron. We try to get it the way the technique that was used in the 19th century. 
So this is heavy silk, so we're gonna have to use a nice little bit of pressure on it. And you can see some, of, there you can see some of the cording. You can absolutely see it there. And then we're gonna do the same here. Just lay the iron on it. And the tarlatan will get a little bit of stickiness to it, which is a good thing. So might as well, it's turning out the uh, tarlatan. See, yeah. just like right here. Straighten it. Mm -hmm. Straighten it, yeah. And it's gonna kind of slightly stick to the fabric, which is what you want. So we're good. And look how beautiful that looks. File is just wonderful fabric to work with, it's like butter. Okay, now we're gonna do the side seams and we'll be back. So we're back, we're clipping some threads off and Jose just did a little snip to our center point because we don't want a bunch of bulk there yeah, that from was the seams. Up here. So, so I, I can that. you flip it the other way so they can see that? So you've you've cut that really even with the point. Yes. So it's really good. And that's it's it's very flattened out now. So, okay. So we're ready to do the side seams. Okay, but before I'm gonna do some tap stitching along here, the the, uh, the back around the neckline. Uh, at this point, is best to do it now right. before so the side. So we're we're basically going to be basting this. So they could do this by hand or they could do it by machine, but we're going to do it by machine because we're going to cover that all with ribbon. So it it, it won't it, nothing's going to show. So you're just doing it right at the very edge. Just. Now in your kit, uh, you, will, you will be using white thread for this because again, it's not gonna show you. The, the thread is included in your kit. We're just using this because it happened to be in the machine. to do this part but um yeah we, we can do it we can do it and, and as you can see it's the unraveling of any kind of silk material you've got to get in it and work it and get it sewn up as soon as possible yes uh i've we've seen people mess around with a bodice for three hours in a class and by the time by the time the three hours are up it's totally unraveled so I think the thing is you really do need to put put do this quickly. But once once you've gotten those basting lines in, you're you're okay. You take your time then. It's already okay. taking shape. It's looking great. And now we'll do the side seams. How many stitches are you doing per inch? I I don't know. Oh, it should yeah. say right there on the. It should say. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm doing about seven. Seven stitches per inch. Okay. Yes. This is heavy. By the time all this is in, it's fairly heavy. So. Sometimes when you do, you know, like sorry, 12 or 14 stitches per inch, it can actually just cut the fabric. So I think that that's a good for this particular. It's a heavy material, so that, yeah. yeah. Okay, now we have our sides. 
we are going to open this press and when and when jose says open he means press so we're going to press, press the out. seams open So we'll do that and we're gonna come back and we were gonna we're gonna actually fit it on the girl because we need to do that now before we go too far. So we've got all the side seams sewn up, the center, the shoulders. Now it's the moment of truth. We're going to fit it to see if it will fit. Now I will tell you something that uh I lower, loosened her hoop skirt. The hoop skirt was up too high. It was good for other dresses, but not for this one. So I lowered it, and they would do that in the 19th century, late rise, and that's why most of them had the, hey, that's pretty good. Yep. I think we've got a really good fit. Um, and so we're gonna, I'm gonna call that a, a that worked pretty darn good. And you can see, so I lowered the hoop skirt, as I said, and that just gave more room for the bodice to lay properly. So now we're going to work on the next stage, which is um, we're going to do the sleeves. We'll put the sleeves in, so we've got to get those out of our little bag and cut them, and we will be right back. So we're back. We've completed most of the work on the bodice. And the next step would be to do the sleeves. Although it says in your instructions to do the waist and the neckline now, which you can do, we're not gonna do it um, in that order because we wanna get some machine work done here with the sleeves. So we're gonna do next, we're going to packet number seven. And so we had our pieces in, uh, sleeve piece in packet number seven, and in that you get the solid cream silk and our tarlatan. So we're going to, that's what you'll get. It's a pretty nice size piece, but this is also a big sleeve um, by the time it's all gathered in. So we're gonna press it out, uh, both pieces. So we'll go over here to the our little trusty little ironing board, and we'll press the pieces. And it's a good time to check the condition, and it looks, we try to make sure everything's perfect, but you know what? Sometimes we make mistakes. This looks really, really good. This is random, by the way, people. We didn't, um, we just picked a kit, so it's good. So we're gonna just press it out. And those lines are in pretty tight, so we may need to do a little um, misting. Oh, we Not need a so little more heat? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it, it helps if we have it on. <laughs> but we're going to mist it so that we can get. And we're going to have these misting bottles on our site because I just love them because they never spurt out and make a mess on the fabric. So it's just beautiful, beautiful silk. And actually has the smell, when you smell it, it smells like silk. So we've got that pretty good. Mm -hmm. So that'll be our fold. And then we've got to press out our tarlatan. And again, tar even tarlatan, it's a very kind of crude type of fabric, but you really want it to be good quality. And this is, the lines are very straight um, because that sometimes shows through. So our these indentations, our tarlatan's good. So we're ready to go back and cut out. Head over here and back to our. <clears throat> so we're going to do this on the fold. And I'm going to move her out of the way for now. Yeah. 
You normally do your cutting standing up, don't you? Yep. So we have to do that twice. And you're trying to get as close to the seams as you can. Although there you're not in the seams, but that's gonna be all gathered in if there's little tiny little pinpricks in the silk. Um, we try to avoid that, but we also know there are little techniques you can do to make those little pinpricks go away. showed you a little secret <laughs> yep. and it's a it's a it's a good little secret you'll save all this so so you know those of you that think we're parsimonious with fabric for our kits you've got that much extra silk so that's your your get out of jail piece if you make a mistake on something else You know, the secret to do this, you know, basically um, four pieces is you have to have very sharp um, scissors for cutting this. If you were working with some scissors that were old and too dull, it, it, it's going to just chew up the fabric. So I'm just going to cut this right here. So that's a nice little piece. Yep. That's a, that's a mignonette dress or a... And you're going to do the same concept with yes, the tarlatan. Same concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. You want to cut them all at once. The way they all they all are the same. Yeah, same you want size. Them to match up. Yes. Especially when we're doing these little Chanel points, we really need it to match up. We've gone out with our pinning a little bit outside of the, the lines, but remember, we're going to be putting two rows of trim on those points. is we're taking our good scissors and we're going to cut through the... Um... I'm using Michael's good scissors. <laughs> <laughs> going through the tarlatan. But sometimes we have to break the rules, so we're just going to do it. It's not that bad. Now all these little scraps absolutely should be saved because that's really it. that's some that's some good stuff there for some other stuff for of hat making for yes. smaller um, dolls mignonettes yes. and even this this little bit here we we really have to save it we have a very 19th century approach to fabric here and which is waste not want not and if you notice how jose is cutting one point one way and then he's going to go back the other way and cut it. 
it's just making it much more exact by doing it in that technique. So we're cut out now. Two sleeves, two tarlatan. Two sleeves, two tarlatan. We are now going to do the encasing of the uh, the police Chanel points. The machine is loaded up with the white thread, which you you receive white thread in your kit, and that's really what you should use for most all of the construction of this kit. There's going to be some pink or, or salmon, pink, it's pink, that will come with your kit, and that you're going to use for the trimming work. But the reason we are giving you white thread is because when you see uh, the sewing in the dress, it is going to be all, um, the tarlatan is white, so the white threads just blend in perfectly. And this is to me, I think, don't you think, Jose, that in these kits, this is the most work, is doing these, uh, besides the hand sewing, is doing the, this sewing. This point, yes, yes. But you know, I think Police Chanel costumes are so fun to do because they're, they're all about having fun and exuberance and, and, um, you can't really do anything wrong. All right, so we've got that pinned, and we'll pin the other, and then we will be back and we will start some sewing. We're back, we're going to, we've, we've pinned everything, we've cut it, we've pinned it, and now we're gonna to start to do the sewing. This you can do by hand if you like, but I suggest that you really do this by machine to get that nice tightness. So we're gonna start sewing. So we're at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And that is yes. printed on your pattern. Now this making these points is, uh, you know, kind of tricky. You just have to take your time. And take your time, yes. And we're very obsessive here, but you don't have to get that obsessive about this because the, the sharpness of this really happens when you trim it. That's when you really make that happen. Those of you that don't understand why we would be using tarlatan for this lining is tarlatan was used in almost every Police Chanel costume and Police Chanel doll that I have ever seen. And we, we've had a lot of them in our career. Sometimes the actual tarlatan is, is the body of the um, Police Chanel and then it would have a silk covering over that. And the reason they used it is, is it gave it a really a nice shape that you have this kind of um, hoops that you want. You can see Bixby's wandering around. thinks he needs to get under the big display table. But she's there now.
So it doesn't take that much time to do it. It just, you just have to sit and do it. Let's continue. I want to do, now the next step is, you want to do clips. Oh, right. Clip. Exactly. Clip this right there. This is very important. So. Don't clip the uh, stitching. Yeah, you go, but you go right up to the stitching. Yes. This is a little secret technique. This is not in your kit uh, uh, directions because if you put it into words, people might do the wrong thing. But by seeing it in life, it does, it makes sense. And you'll see because we've got to turn that inside out. So you've clipped off the tips of the because we don't want the, that bulk there, a bunch of fabric stuck there. Now, what you can do too, it's uh, trim this, this seam allowance a little narrower if you'd like to, but uh, you, they can leave it like, like that. You yeah, know, that's fine. That's fine. So now we'll turn, turn it, it over. I'm going to do every point like this. So you do it as so much as you can with your fingers. Gently. And Gently, yes. You don't want to ruin the uh, fabrics. <clears throat> it's like turning a glove inside out. And now we use the pointer. The, the pointer. Use the pointer and do it gently too. It's okay. It's just the pointer, Bixby. Bix. That's really nice. I mean, that's a really nice thing. So, we, so we're gonna turn this all inside out, uh, do the other piece, turn it inside out, and we'll be back. Okay. We're back. So we've got the sleeves done, and I helped. So we've turned them inside out. Uh, they're actually really pretty good. Now, if, if they're a little wonky, don't worry about that because you're gonna straighten them out, making them very, pointy with your trims with the trims yes yes mm -hmm. and um and, and just think of it people every one of those little points you have to sew a bell on to now jose did a different technique that i didn't recommend but you can certainly do it and it makes total sense which he encased the side seam so that that way when it's sewn closed it makes a smooth um seam it's a french seam basically basically um and and i love your uh reason for doing that is that it creates less um fibers for the doll's fingers to grab on right so it's a really good concept so that's not in your directions but we're telling you here now to do that so the next step is we're going to sew those up so right uh, no no after we do the trimming on it then we once all of that is finished then we'll, we'll proceed to close that okay and uh, we also do need to do the lace oh that's right we right? need to do the lace now yeah or, or no after the after, trim after the trim. Yeah. okay so we're going to come back to these sleeves yes yes okay so it, it's out of order but this is how we're this is what our mood swing is today so that's how we're going to do it so the next thing we're gonna do is go back to what we should have done earlier, which is we're going to do the ribbon work uh, trim on the neckline and the waist and fit, fitting the back. So we'll get that done and uh, we'll, we'll shortly show you how to do that. So we're back, we've done some house cleaning on the bodice and now we're going to work on the um, edge binding. So we have our ribbon. And I have a special technique for ironing ribbon and I want to share it with you because it's easy, especially delicate ribbon like this, to make a mess of it. You only iron it in one direction. Do not go back. So then the next thing that we're going to do, so Jose showed that very quickly. This he's going to show slowly. So this is what we need to, we should be doing this the other way so that we're, we're gonna pull this through. So you're gonna go like so. Mm -hmm. 
and fold it. Okay, and get it started. Mm -hmm. Put the iron on it. No, just now that we're going to let put the iron this way. And now don't move it, just pull it. Okay. And just pull it. And it'll come out beautiful. So that's how you do it. So you just pull, start, get it started. And then you just pull it through the iron without lifting the iron up. And that's what gives you that nice little crisp fold. And it doesn't damage the ribbon. So we're going to now, uh, if we've got a little bulldog that's getting in the garbage, there he is down there. Bix, you want to say hello to everyone? <laughs> yes. You've been good all day, so it's, a, it's okay if you get a little naughty. All right. So we're gonna go back. And now we've, oh, before you take it off, show them, let's show okay. them how, how nice it fits. We've done all of the, uh, um, Jose did all of the um, overcasting of the seam, so that's all ready. We've got the back pretty much figured out how we want it to be. So it's nice and tight, don't you mm -hmm. think so? Yes, it's okay. very nice. Yep. So now we're going to okay. do this. We folded this, this the uh, sides. So, okay. And now uh, to add this ribbon, what we need to do is clip. Uh, make this a little narrow, the uh, seam allowance. Yeah, we're going we're gonna we to trim that. Trim mm -hmm. that a little bit. I mean, not too much, just enough to keep it very. You want to hide. You don't want the top stitching to to show. No, no. And we've got a little bit of bulk there, so we want that to go away. And that's all, that's all sewn down, so there's no thread of unraveling at this point. Okay, just a little. Yeah, and that makes it much, much sharper. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've measured off about 18 inches of ribbon, and that's about what it'll take. It doesn't say in the pattern that you know anybody could you can get your tape measure out and measure all the the uh, pieces and you know the area that you have to cover and and get that okay, maybe i can start from this side instead yeah, start, wherever, for start for wherever it is easiest for you anyone out there whatever side is easiest for you to do You know, this is this is just elegant finish work because you're actually the only way you're gonna see this is if you look down her dress. And then the only way you're gonna see it at the waist is if you look up her dress. So either way. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're not gonna we're gonna start pinning it, but we're not gonna pin it. We're gonna just sew it, correct? Yes. That's what how I would do it. Yeah, by uh, pressing this in half, the ribbon in half, that's what it does. It um, yeah, rubs need... both sides. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a few stitches on that. Show you the technique that we use. This is very delicate ribbon, so you do not want to overstress it. So you kind of have to get it right the first time. And I'm going to come around this way because that way you don't have to sew upside down. And that's the back edge. Mm. Back, back opening. We're gonna take little flea bite um, stitches on the 
inside and they can be a little bit bigger in the on the or little flea bites on the outside and bigger in the inside we have this um, ribbon dyed to match this fabric which really is a beautiful match don't you think absolutely yep but it's something you don't want to make a mistake and take out that's looking really nice so we're going to finish that up and then we will be back So we're back, we've gotten the, uh, the, the neckline trimmed, uh, and we've got the waist trimmed. Um, as I said earlier, these are just very luxurious um, finishes because these really aren't gonna be seen unless you're looking down her top or looking up her skirt, but it, we know it's there. So we've got that done, and I'm very happy with how the, the bodice is looking. The little later on, I will, in a break, I'll, I'll overcast those uh, seams, but everything else is overcast. And it actually feels almost like it's boned, um, which is a wonderful thing to have in a miniature ensemble. So I think we're gonna trim the neckline so that that way we don't have to go back to that. So this is our trim and we're going to just start with enough of a fold we're not going to turn it over um, yet, but we're gonna turn it over once we kind of get it knotted up. And um, there is a right side and a wrong side to this trim. The fluffy side is the right side that we want to be showing. So it's it would be the very, um, can you show that Jose very? fluffy, luxurious, that's it. So if you flip it over to show them the back, it's very braid-like. The braid goes towards whatever you're sewing it on. So this goes right up at the edge. So um, basically you could get away with not putting the ribbon there, but it does create a nice look to have that little pink edge poking out. And I, I should tell you that this is really wonderful trim to sew on. It's so smooth and easy. Don't you think it's easy? Yes, it's very easy. It's really nice. And um, it's silk, and you can, um, you could dye this. I mean, um, I wouldn't recommend it for the design to, to change the color, but we do sell it by the yard, so you could buy it and dye it any color you want. So look at how fast that sewing because it's just so easy. It gives you no resistance. And then when we get to the, the corners, we will, we're not folding over. We just continue on. Continue yeah. almost even when we're turning like it's straight and it will actually create the miter naturally. You, know, you can't do that with all uh, fabrics. So let's just say if we were working with our trims, if we were working with like a grosgrain ribbon, there's no way we could do this without doing some kind of a fold. So if you can see, Jose's just pulling it straight and it's just doing its thing naturally, following the contour of the, the bodice top. Now when we get to the center point, we're gonna do a couple of stitches top and bottom because we want that to look as pointy as we can. And you notice that we haven't, we're not cutting this, we're not pinning it, we're not cutting it until we're done 
Um, there's no need to pin this. You will just be fighting with pins. You can do it slowly if you need to and just get it done. But look at how that the center is looking really good. And that went really, really smooth. And we're gonna get to the edge and we're gonna just snip off a little bit because we do not want to waste any of this trim. And we're gonna do a little fold over. and that trim is not going anywhere. We're doing a little extra precaution of, because it is woven, so you really wanna make sure it's, it's, it's tacked down good because you don't want it unraveling. That's looking wonderful. So the next stage is we're gonna do, we're gonna bring out the gold and we're gonna do the gold trim. So we'll get that and we'll be right back. We're back and we're now gonna put the second uh, layer of trim, which is our gold trim, which is a wonderful trim. It's some of the nicest trim that I've, gold trim that I've ever worked with. Sometimes, isn't it true, Jose? It's Oops. like, it's like you need a hammer to get the needle through it. It's like but this, cement. This just is like butter and it's an open weave, so it's very easy to sew. And um, your stitches just blend into it, so you don't have to be the greatest hand sewer in the world to get this on. And look how fast that's going. I actually really enjoy doing the trim on this, um, with this particular trim. Sometimes trimming is, is a nightmare because it slips and moves, but this just works out great. We're using white thread because it d does not show on the gold at all. And then the un underside, it is in the tarlatan, so it just blends in. So you really can't see stitches at all. And we're sewing this with a hot needle, as they say, because Police Chanel costumes are always very exuberant and um, they're not overthought out. They're carnival costumes for, you know, um, carnival, special carnivals and, and um, masquerade balls. So they wouldn't be as scrutinized as a evening gown. And this trim, uh, as you said, is very smooth, so it um, just blends in into the curves, you know? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It, and it, you don't have to do any folds or anything. And the, uh, too many folds on trims can become very, very bulky, and it ruins the... Um, it ruins the look when you start having these layers of bulk. Now when we, we figured the trim on this, we consider that some people are not going to be able to do what you just did, so we gave them a little leeway of uh, material so that if they felt they had to fold it, they could.
Okay, you got 15 seconds to get this done in under four minutes. <laughs> Fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-four minutes, four minutes and two seconds. Okay. So you should have <laughs> four minutes and eight and nine seconds, ten seconds. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little I, I'm behind. Gonna, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say you did it in four minutes. <laughs> I'm a little behind. I'm sorry. Next time, do it faster. Now, doesn't that look lovely? Yes. All right. So then we we now have a totally new. Um, thing to get ready to do and we'll be right back so we're back we are now going to work on the sleeves so we've turned them in inside out as, as we showed you earlier and now we're starting the sleeve trimming uh, again we're using the the same trim as the neckline and it's going on as this does really really well smooth fast and Jose's getting to the points he's getting to the point of the matter and again this is you basically go straight all the way around don't try to miter it if you have a little pucker there don't worry because the the bells are going to go right on the edge and that's going to take um, sew that down so you don't even really have to worry about that extra stitch there because you're going to be doing it every single one of those points has a bell on it so this is going very very nicely this is such a don't you think this is a fun project to do hand sewing wise yes And we're not cutting any trim until we're done because that way we can save trim um, for you you should be doing it this way too because you know what uh, fabric is a precious little thing so anything that's left over could be made into another garment even if it's a mignonette or a, or a little German child or a hat you just have to use your fingers like Jose is doing and just do a little per finger pressing. And if you get it wrong, it's not lining up, then you just take it out and do it again. And this one, we're probably not going to fold it over because it's going to go in the seam, isn't it? Yes. So that'll save it. us a little, a little tiny bit of fabric. So we're we're going to we we've, we've got this under control. So Jose and I are going to go and sew on the gold trim. And remember, there's a right side and a wrong side, but it's basically the same technique 
for the sleeves as we used in the uh, top. So we're gonna do that and then we'll be right back. We're back. We've done most of the trim work on the sleeves in the gold metallic trim, but this we wanna show because we are doing a very, very slight fold over miter. Miter something that you use in picture framing and um, house um, moldings and things in houses. So this we're, we're, we're just doing a very, very slight miter fold over. But you, you really have to be very consistent with it or it will become very bulky. So these are pretty well flattened out. And again, it's it's really not that hard. You do, this, this trim is just so great to work with. I'm glad I we, we ordered a lot of this to have for our old age. And it was, uh, it was quite an ordeal because it got caught up in customs for a month and someone had to go retrieve it for us. Just creates a lovely little effect. And of course, this is gonna have bells all over it. Each one of those points is gonna have a great little bell. This project, we've exhausted the world's supply of these little, the little tiny bells. Each uh, kit has, I think, 72 bells in it. The gold's easy to, to sew down to, don't you think? Oh, one? absolutely, yes, it is. The good thing about it too is that I'm using white thread and uh, it just uh, it doesn't show. It just doesn't show. No. And when we get this done, we'll flip it over so they can see that um, with the tarlas and the stitches really don't show when you're using the white thread. Let me tell you, it's not been easy to get thread for these kits, but um, we've done it because there was, you know, with the world situation, there was a shortage of thread. Some of them you just have to little work it. Don't try to, people don't try to pin this down and then so it, it just will be a nightmare. Don't you agree? It, it could be a nightmare. Uh, you could pin the, the pointy ends right here instead of uh, pinning the whole thing, uh, but. I think it's just as easy to do it just the way you Without it, yeah, it. yep. I mean, you're doing it pretty fast, uh, but you know, the, the normal people don't have to do it this fast. Just to make you all feel better, I can't do it that fast. Although you're getting kind of slow. This is four minutes. Um, sorry, I'm so <laughs> Did lazy. Did you have your coffee? Yes, I have, but you know, it's not working. <laughs> Don't overthink this because 
this is this is going to be gathered up so if you didn't do it absolutely perfectly it's it's going to be gathered and it's going to look so cute that no one's going to go oh she didn't get her miters just perfect they're not going to say that because that's not this is about fun and exuberance the playful character of Chanel and Mademoiselle Polichanel. Don't worry about that little fat, little fluffy, because the um, the bell will, will the bell will, attachment will take that right down. You know what? If you do a really, really good job on this, I'll give you your own needle threader. Are you telling me? I'm telling you. So you don't have to do it the old fashioned way. But let's be real, you won't be able to do that for too much, too much longer. <laughs> Okay, so we've got that, that is trimmed out. So that is looking good. All right, so we will be back. So we're back. The next thing we're gonna do is the lace attachment and the arm gather, because they really are something that you can do together. So we're gonna apply the lace and I think we should show the pattern piece, Jose, to go along with that. So you have a sewing gathering line. That's about where you put the lace. So we're going to do a two for one. So we're going to sew them both at the same time, um, the, the lace and do the gathering stitch. So we're, we're putting that on. So I'm going to pin the center right here which is uh, what I did here was I was leaving, see this edge right here? Right, uh, put that right on the, um, right at the edge of, yeah. of the mm -hmm. tip, yeah. And then you're going straight across, or you're, you're gonna do a little curve? You're gonna do a little curve, because okay. um, uh, that's what you need to you do. You could, or you, you don't have to, but you, you, I mean this, there you've got some freedom to do it the way you wanna do it. Now we're not using gathering the lace to put in it because this is a lot of volume of um, fabric to go along this little arm. So if we gathered it, it would be just too much. Although you can't be too much when you're a Mademoiselle Polichanel. And this is really wonderful lace to, to work with. It just feels good. I have to buy lace when I can handle it because if I can't handle it and I don't like the way it feels, I don't really want it. So you're gonna just pin that so it doesn't. Yeah stays in line of what you want to do. So you've created a little bit of a curvature. 
which I didn't do, but I like the concept of what you did. Well, it's because these points are in a curvature. Yeah, that's true. So you kind of want to follow those uh, tips, right? Yes. Okay, so the next step, step would be uh, to do some running stitch right here with fairly um, small uh, stitches, okay? Yeah. And you've got... Um, oh, my you got a mess there. Yes, this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why don't you just cut that out? Let's it's just, fine. Is it going to work? Okay. Yeah. You work with a lot longer thread than I do. I just cannot do that. Never have been able to. The nice thing about the lace is it, it helps you um, um, measure your stitches because you can just follow the pattern in the lace. Now we're just getting these threads in here now. We're not gonna gather it for a little bit because we've got some other things that we have to do before we do that. Leave it, gonna, leave it that make long. Sure leave it long. Leave it long, and you're do, using double, double yeah. thread. And this is a, you know, this is new, good quality thread, and um, you, this is some, this kind of thing you don't want to use old thread. That when you go to pull all that, and then it just snaps. I mean, you really have to use some good thread. All right. Well, we'll be back for the next step. We're going to do the second line, which is going to be about. Where where are we gonna say? You just wanna follow, follow this us, line yeah. right here. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So you couldn't go it's wrong. It's built in. Yep. We'll be back. We're back. Uh, we finished the um, both of the sleeves, the the gathering stitch to um, gather up the the sleeves, um, the lace trim, the trim. It's all ready to go. So the next ste step is putting the sleeve together and doing the gathering. Mm -hmm. Yep. So first, what are we going to do first? First, I'm going to do a top stitch right here. And this is going to be for the gathering mm -hmm. for the armhole, correct? Yes. All right, so you're doing a very loose, biggest stif stitch we have, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Rosie, she's going a mile a minute for an old lady. She's just doing it. Now remember, you always, when you're going to do a, a gathering stitch on a machine, you always have to leave a nice amount of thread for pulling. Well, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pleat this by hand, okay? So I'm going to do this. Um, this is just, uh, I'm going to do a little clip here. So we're doing something different. What are we doing now? I'm attaching the sleeves on, um, um, like so, closing it. Closing it. Closing the sides. It. Yes, and I'm uh, gonna under, do it under. Yes, I'm gonna do it by hand. Okay. Okay. And you're doing it by hand so that that way we can control our our gathering stitches, 
for for the for, for pulling it, correct? Yes. Because if you did the machine, no matter what stitch, it would it would interfere. If you do it on the machine, if you want to uh, uh, gather this leaf on the machine, since it's got the um, tarlatan, it'll be hard to pull. Yeah. So I'm going to show you my trick, how I would I'm do it. I'm seeing it. Because um, I'm attaching these leaves to the bodies by hand. Right. We're not going to use the machine at all. Okay. Right. Well, we can't even really get a machine into a little armhole like that once it's sewn up. I know a lot of a lot of sewers have a, a huge uh, fear of setting in sleeves. Yes, I, sleeves I, are they can be a pain in the neck. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? It it's it's actually pretty easy once you kind of do it. Leo is really good. Leo is very good. Really good at the, yeah, yeah. But you know the our our new um, costumes that are coming up um, in kits. They have very, very fitted, and there. See, so now that part is closed. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a nice finish there. You yes. will have thread sticking, um, uh, getting stuck to the fingers of the doll. Yeah. So now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close uh, the lace together. Okay, because we have that it separately. Separately. Because we want yes. it to hang. Yes. We don't want it to be caught up in the, uh, And these are little techniques that are not in your pattern uh, directions because sometimes... You see what I did? Uh -huh. I brought that down. That way, get it out of the way. Then put the laces, two lace sides of the lace together. And just do um, some this fine This is something stitch. you have to see. It's, you can't really describe it in words. You just have to see how it's done. That's the wonderful thing about the internet is that we're able to show this to you and hopefully you'll have a, a nicer experience creating this garment. Let me tell you, when, when I started out on this a long time ago, there was nothing like this that you could ever see. And, and most of the people that could do work like this, they really didn't want to um, share their knowledge. You know, everybody who knows how to sew, they um, they all have tricks and a way, their own way of um, finishing a garment or something. So Absolutely. I don't mind sharing because um, I'm not the curator of those ideas, you know. Those were uh, passed oh, on you've, 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 generation by generation. You've thought of a few of your own little... I think I have. ...titties. All right, okay. so it's ready, to, it's ready to gather. Okay, so the next uh, step on this will be... I'm going to press this over like so. Okay. While he's pressing, it's not that exciting. We'll look at what's happening in the room. It's nice to have all the girls and the boys out. And it's nice to see Rosie gets to come downstairs. She's usually up in the mezzanine. She's got a light out. We've got to get that fixed. It's been a while. So you've done a fold over for the sleeve. Yes. And now you're going to do a gathering stitch. Gathering stitch by hand. By yes. hand. So you need mm -hmm. um, double, double, double thread. thread. So let, let's, can you flip that a little bit so they can see that, so you've just done a fold and that's where you're going to go up and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. And so the, the, those of you that might have been confused by the, the machine stitch, that was just basically a basting stitch to 
hold the, the tarlas and, and the silk together. Yeah. Also, if people want to do the gathering on the machine, do two, two running stitches, uh, top stitches, they can... They can do that. They can do it, yeah. 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 They don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, you know. Okay, so... Start at the underarm. You're gonna do like a whip stitching and you're gonna start pulling. As you go. Uh, pull as you go. Don't do it all the way till you're done because if, if if then you try to pull, then the uh, thread will. It'll break. It's it'll too break. Much. Yeah. Too now, much. this is not in your pattern because this is not a normal technique that you'd use for this, but it, it works really good. And I learned that from Jose. So you can see how what a nice little tight um, gather that creates. You couldn't get that by just doing a gathering stitch. You have to, this is special technique. This is right worth the price of admission right here. See? That's very um, 19th century work. Yes, exactly. Yep. And actually, this type of uh, gathering, it's uh, finer. The machine does a nice work too, but uh, if you, like Michael mentioned, you know, very of the 19th century style, so, and that's what we're doing, so it works fine. And, uh, the, I mean, this stitch, you would never know how it's done unless you took it apart. So it's nice to see it done, demonstrated. I usually do about 10 stitches and then I pull. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's a lot of work to do stitches and then have it break. It's getting there. And it's starting to get that poof that we want, that wonderful Puli Chanel poof. These costumes should look like candy, you know? They should just look like a little candy in a French store. That's oh, beautiful over right in the shape. I gotta watch you because this you're getting into some kung fu sewing here. Oh, and I'm slow. You know? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta slow down so they get a they get a concept of it. Okay, maybe in our a, videos we'll get a, a whip stitch. Yeah. This is what I call a whip stitch, or yeah. maybe that's what I call. It is okay. So and you just pull. Gently, you, so know, you don't want doing your about thread. 12 stitches, is that what you're... Uh, six to 10 stitches. Oh, but look at how beautiful that is. That makes beautiful gathering. gathering. Yep. Yeah, just a gorgeous gathering. And we're gonna be using this technique a few times in this outfit because we'll use it on the over the uh, over sleeve and then we'll use it in the uh, over skirt. Darling. 
Okay, I'm not gonna pull the last stitches because I'm going to measure the arm. The arm, because it's gonna go like so. Okay, mm -hmm. so basically, uh, maybe I need to pull this a little more, make it wider. Well, we'll fit it and then we'll be back. So we're back and we're inserting the sleeve and Jose has pinned it and now we're going to sew it. And we're going to sew to the fold line that we established earlier. And if you notice his technique, which is different than most people's, is that he's sewing this on the outside of the sleeve hole. And this is really almost like a um, hanging skirt. Same concept, isn't it? Yep. And you'll see this on um, Hiray Garments. You'll also see it in um, um, Isana Walkers. Uh, it's, it's an early technique. And sometimes they would make it even more fabulous is that they would pipe it and then use the, the, the ditch of the piping to uh, sew it to the armhole. And this is a great way to have the fit because it, it, it will absolutely, if the doll, doll's arm went through the armhole, it will fit. But you can really easily um, manipulate the, the, the gathers by doing this technique. I also think it's very uh, easy, easier. It I is. think it's easier, mm -hmm. you know. And then when we're done, we'll go and we will uh, gather the, um, overcast the armhole so that it's strong. All right, so we're gonna do the other one and then we will be back and we will show you uh, the, the gathering at the, the elbow. So we've gotten our sleeves done and I think we're, we're happy with them, aren't we? Uh, we sure are. Yeah, as happy as we can be for, for, for fussy people. So they've, they've really turned out very nice. And so the next stage, I mean, we've got some tweaking to do with our points and we'll do that at the final stage before we put the uh, ribbon ties to get everything in alignment. But the next thing we have to do is the oversleeve. The oversleeve. So we're gonna do that next. So we'll, we will grab our little bag and we will get out our oversleeve so we've got our, our pattern piece, we've got our pattern piece, and our tarlatan, and we are gonna, we're gonna cut this out. So let's give it a press and we'll be right back. So we've got our pieces pressed out, now we are cutting them. It's getting late in the day, so um, Jose's doing the naughty, which is using the, the silk scissors for cutting out the silk and the tarlatan in one piece. That being said, this is very, very, really lovely lightweight silk, so it's not, it's not that bad. Now remember these little techniques of doing the doing all the cuts in one direction and he's gonna go the other. Just gives you a cleaner, a cleaner cut.
and you almost got your fabric lined up perfectly with the pattern. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. In this piece, there's a nice little extra bonus of silk that if you have a problem with the shoes um, that you're going to make, then you you can uh, you got a little extra piece, and if, if you do everything right, then you'll have enough to do a cute little mini-net costume or an accessory. So there we go. So now we're now we've got to just do our encasing and um, turning it inside out, which you've already seen. It's the same concept of what we've done with the, the other pieces. So we will come back with the uh, showing you the gathering of this when when we get to that point. So we've got the uh, over sleeve um, encased, turned inside out, pressed out, and the over um, top of the sleeve is um, basted close. So we're ready now to do the next stage, which is um, the uh, trimming. So we're going to kind of do... Um, it's basically the same concept as the lower sleeve as far as the placement of the uh, trims. So we're going to do that and we're going to do a little bit of a, the Lady and the Tramp um, situation because Jose's got one end of the trim and I've got the other and hopefully we will not be meeting. So we will get this done and we will be back. So we've got the uh, silk trim on the oversleeve uh, in the outer trim and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on the gold. So we'll be right back with that. Hello, we are back. We're now going to work on the oversleeve, but I think I should show you we have a little helper here today and that's Mr. Bixby. So he's in, he's in the sewing room. He's He's totally enthusiastic. You can tell he just thinks that this is great that we're doing this today. Well, back to Jose. You had a good night's sleep. Are you ready to do it again today? Yes, I did. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. So uh, while we were, um, while you were all away, we finished putting the trim on the um, over sleeve, and now we're going to gather it. Gather it. Yes. Okay, so that's the, how it looks from the back, and uh, I press down this this uh, the seam. Okay. And you basted it, and then you and then you pressed it down. Yes. So. And they could do that by hand, or they could do that by machine, whatever, whatever they like, right? Yes. And now you're gonna do your. I'm gonna do the whip stitching, and I'm gonna gather it by hand. And again, you go about between six and 10 stitches and then you pull, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you hear sounds in the background, David is in the packing room getting packages out to, out to the public. And Samantha's editing video for so there's a lot of activity in any minute now, probably the UPS driver will be here or FedEx. Yeah, we'll be knocking on the door again. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna move over that way so that that way they can see. So you don't have to sew upside down, but they can see how this is looking nice thing about stripes is you can really use the stripes to measure off your stitches really easy if your grid work 
course, when you're working with stripes, if you've made a mistake and your stripes are all wobbly, it, it magnifies it. You have to pull as you go, or if you've got It'll be hard for you to do it if you um, whip stitch it all the way over. Uh, then you try to pull, uh, it's gonna break uh, the thread and um, and uh, it's because it's got the tarlatan in it. That makes the fabric a little stiffer, so yeah, and, it's hard. And bulkier. Yes. I mean, if you were doing this with just the silk, you could get away with, but, but it's still, it's better to do this as you go. We kind of have a feeling of, of how big the uh, that should be for the armholes. I have this or one or, already done. And you fitted it. And I fitted it, and uh, that's what I want. So that will be about, we can measure here, four inches. Okay. And, and this is and, uh, and and this is something that if you wanted to make it three and a half or you wanted to make it five, you can do whatever you want because it's really a decorative element. All right, so now let's 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 lay it on her and see how she looks. There she is. Poor thing. We, as we were working with her, we drop her wig and mess her wig up and. I have to go to my beauty shop. Oh, that looks beautiful. And that's perfect. I can see what your, the idea was, is to have that kind of line up with that, which is, I guess that's how we intended it, but <laughs> yep. it was when we did the design of this, it was a couple a couple months ago. All right, so shall we, we're gonna sew that on and then we'll be back. So we've gotten one sleeve, uh, over sleeve attached, and now we're gonna show you the technique to sew that on. Um, I like to use small needles, and Jose likes to use long needles. Um, so in this case, he, he's using the right needle to do, to what you need to do to do this. So tell me how you're gonna do it. Okay, I'm gonna, I folded this in half and I mark your the center, center mm -hmm. my center. My center is gonna go right here on the um, on shoulder seam. Shoulder seam. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then mm -hmm. I'm gonna go all the way over here. And it's going right into the armhole area. Mm -hmm. And you're going through, you're doing like a stab stitch through. Then almost like a... Then the stitch will, sh will not show. And this is why you really need to have this long needle because mine wouldn't really get through all that. You're going through, uh, let's see, one, two, uh, some, some point six, six layers of fabric. You're right over the arm seam. So you need the bigger needle for this. You're feeling in the underside um, when it's falling right into place the way we want it.
And one last stitch. I'm going to tie it off on the inside. Okay, there we go. Well, now we're going to do the, we'll be back in a second, and we'll do the last, the last detail on the bodice. It's looking great. Well, this has been an awfully exciting sewing workshop for Bixby. <laughs> so. Okay, so now we're gonna do the final detail of the um, bodice, which is the sleeve bows. So you will take 10 inches of vel or, uh, silk ribbon from your kit and you will cut it off and that's what we're going to use to do the sleeve decoration. So you just simply wrap it around, tie it in a, a, a knot. There's the knot. Like so. Mm -hmm. And then once we've kind of manipulated the, the, um, the, the gathers to have them look the way we want, then we're going to tack the center of the, the knotted ribbon down in place. Correct? Yes. Is that what you're doing? Yes, that's why it doesn't move move around. Okay. Can you turn it just a little bit yes. this way so they can see what you're doing? There. There. I'm making it happen. And I then think. once we've sewn that down and we've clipped it, then we're going to actually tie the bow part. Which is not going to be easy because you have to then use your little little fingers and tie it. You can do it on your lap. Yes, you put the doll on your lap. Well, whatever, if you put it on the roof, if it makes it work, we do it. There you go. Lovely. All right, we're going to do the other one, and she'll be done. Except we've got to do that. We're going to do the hooks and things. We're going to do that last when we're all in the... The hooking mood will do the hooks. And so we just do a little, and we might want to, once, once we do the final thing, we'll do a little moving around of the little um, points. All right, so can you turn her head a little bit this way because she's looking, well, no, it's just this way, just a little bit. And then we'll do her hair, but the, the other than the hooks, this this part of the... Uh, the bodies. Is, it's done. It's done. So good it's work. Great. We'll be back.